Hi, welcome back to another episode of Vents Machines. So in this video, we're going to continue working on the Kubota B51 engine rebuild. We're going to remove the piston. As you saw in the previous video, the, the compression in this cylinder was 150 PSI. The compression in this cylinder was around 20. So I've removed this piston already and, and we'll look at it add it on the on the table a little bit later but for now let's let's take this piston out and uh, we'll examine it so let's climb underneath so here we are underneath the engine I've removed the oil pan let me turn the crankshaft so that I can expose the two bolts right here so I'm gonna take my 13 millimeter socket and I'll remove these two bolts. Okay, so I've managed to remove the two 13 millimeter bolts. Just interesting part of these bolts is just the profile of them. Notice how there's, notice the profile? So that's unique, so maybe this video can serve as a as an education for that. And then here's the, the, the bottom part or the bottom half of the connecting rod. And then inside here, you'll see the, the bearing. Okay. So that's off. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna push the piston up. You should see the piston come up out of the bore. So it should be coming up. And now what I'll do is from down below, I'll try to push the remaining part of it. just going to mark the piston for reference so front of the engine rear of the engine I'll put an I here for the injector IP for injector pump okay and then I'll grab it like this and just pull pull it up okay so now let's go over to the to the workbench this is the piston that you just saw me remove let's let me just show you why cylinder number two was only generating 20 psi compression. Have a look at this piston here. Look at the contact surface along the top of this piston. Notice how there's even there's even pieces or metal of the piston that are that is gone. So it looks like the rings are seasoned in place. They don't move. Well, part, part, some parts of the, of the rings have a little bit of movement, but as you can see here, there was major damage to this piston. This cylinder here that we just took out, you can see there's, there's, there's evidence of the piston being pretty badly damaged. So all to say, it looks like this engine may have been worked hard and and possibly it overheated as soon as that these this engine overheats the pistons start overheating you know the metal the metal on the piston starts to smear and and maybe transfers over onto the sleeve and and therefore that compression starts dropping down lower and lower so in a in an ideal sense this this engine each one of these cylinders should be operating um, well over the 400 psi range but if the condition if the engine overheats and parts of the piston starts to deteriorate like you see here the rings start uh, allowing blow by you're not going to get that um, that, that level of compression in each one, each one of the cylinders. And then eventually 
things can get to this point where the engine doesn't run anymore. I'm going to do a um, a mini overhaul of this engine and if you if you pan out over here this way you'll see the new parts that I've ordered. So I bought these parts direct from Kubota so I have the, ra the upper and lower radiator hoses. These are the old upper upper and lower radiator hoses so I have new ones. Over here I have I have my brand new uh, connecting rods they have brand new, you know, bearings, bushings on the on the the piston side and also on the crankshaft side. So we've got new new connecting rods. We've got new pistons. We've got new rings. We've got new wrist pins. I have the new springs or these are the retainer clips that keep the wrist pin in place. I bought those. I bought a brand new O-ring to seal around the on the head gasket. I also have brand new gaskets for the the air the air intake. Just as a as a reminder, this is the air intake, so we're going to replace this gasket and that gasket. Uh, we have I also bought a brand new gasket for the the valve cover. Here's the valve cover right here. There's a gasket that goes inside this channel. Here's the old gasket right here and there's a break in it so we're going to replace that with a brand new gasket and also which is very important is a brand new head gasket. So there's the new head gasket. Here's the old head gasket right here. One other very critical important piece is brand new cylinder liners so I'm just showing you the the bag so the cylinder liners are part number 15261-02310 these are the bags you're probably wondering where are they one of the cylinder liners has already been installed installed in one of the the cylinder bores on the tractor the other one I put it in the deep freezer last night in the hopes of cooling it down to a point where maybe the metal contracts so that when it comes time to install it, hopefully it'll be an easy install because the metal would have contracted on itself to the point where perhaps it will slide into the cylinder bore easier. That's, that's the theory anyway. So just to recap, I already have one cylinder uh, sleeve, cylinder liner in the engine. The other one's in the freezer cooling down. Let me get your attention to the old cylinder liner. So basically this is the sleeve and this go gets pressed into the cylinder bore and the piston, you know, operates up and down inside this, this sleeve. The sleeve has a, a chamfer on the bottom so when you place it into the cylinder bore and you tap it down it self aligns somewhat and then you can you continue pressing it down inside and then on the top part there's a little bit of a chamfer on this side here and in fact there's a little bit of a chamfer on this on this here too but that's not as important because that's on the bottom What's this, you're wondering? Well, this is, this is evidence of me removing the old cylinder liner with a technique that I saw on, on YouTube where you take a screwdriver and you basically wedge it between the liner and the bore and you hammer your cylinder, you hammer your screwdriver down and you essentially break, um, you break it all along the length and then you're left with, you know, little pieces like this of the liner. Once the liner is cracked this way, you can see there's, you know, the liner itself sort of loses its integrity and then you can just take the liner and, and yank it straight out of the bore. So that's one technique. One technique is to physically destroy the liner when it's in the engine with a screwdriver, 
and, and a, a chisel. Another way is this over here. So what I, I did is I spent some time and I, and I made a, a puller. So this surface here will, will rest on top of the engine block. And then I have a, a threaded rod with a five, end, five eighths nut right here that when you rotate this, this bolt, you know, you can, you can extend or you can extend or you can retract this, this bolt. All right. So this, this bearing surface here is, is a part that I made. And the thought here is that this would be applied when it's in the tractor, of course, it would rest on the bottom of the liner and it locates itself with this little groove here on either side. But this diameter or this distance, this overall distance has to respect the diameter of the sleeve so that it can, it can actually travel inside the bore. And then you install this threaded rod like this and you put a nut, another 5.8 nut at the bottom end. And then you, you screw, you turn this screw in in the hopes that this will eventually work its way out. You can buy proper pullers for five, like from 500 to a thousand dollars, but I didn't want to spend all that. So I, I ended up making this. It's possible that this, this, there's not enough strength in this area, but you know what? We'll give it a try. So down inside I have my my plate that's now grabbing what what I think the edges of the sleeve. My puller is bearing down on on you know two sides of the top of the engine block. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I'm going to start rotating this in the hopes of drawing up but I guess what's happening this design I have is flawed you know the mo moment we start pulling hard on this What's happening is that this, this is deforming here and this is also deforming. So this would have to be strengthened because this, this isn't working. If I continue turning, I think it's just going to continue to deform. See how it's, it's spreading apart. Well, Scrap this plan. <laughs> this didn't work. So I think what we're gonna do, gang, is I'm just going to I'm just going to chisel the the uh, the liner out. See what I mean? This is just not strong enough. I should have known because I can even I can even move this. Maybe if I use something like this drill a hole through here kind of make this like this and then get some legs but that'll be for another project we'll put it on the on the shelf we may use it another time let's get that sleeve out so what I would recommend for this job 
is put paper towel here. That keeps any any pieces of metal from that may bounce up from entering any of the passages. Okay, so let's let's try this approach. We're gonna chisel the sleeve out. And what you want to do is preserve the bore, but just make a little space between the bore and the sleeve. See? We've got it. But I, I don't necessarily want to break away the sleeve but just make enough of a gap that I'll use my trusty pointer and help, I'll put him in between. Okay, so I have the screwdriver wedged in between the bore and the sleeve. Okay, just like this, and then you tap the screwdriver the the sleeve is split right down the middle. That's what you want. So we're just going to continue. Okay, and then look at this. You pull the sleeve out all in one piece. Here are the, the remaining pieces of the sleeve. So it's very important that you, you make sure that no metal is, is, uh, is left inside. And look at this. There's no, we didn't disturb the bore at all. I mean, what, I, what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit of sandpaper and I'll just come in here, just go around like this. I'm not pressing hard, I'm just going around lightly just to make sure that there's no, there's no burr or there's no edge left behind and and look at that absolutely no noticeable disturbance of the, the cylinder bore and how long did that take like that literally took a minute let's get our our new our new sleeve installed okay so because the sleeve is in the freezer cooling down i'm just going to apply a little bit of engine, brand new engine oil inside the, the bore here. Because I intend on using a 4x4 post and a, a, a hefty mallet to bang the, the sleeve down inside, because this is wood, I'm just gonna attack, I'm just gonna install some tape just to cover these openings just in case there's any any wood fiber or wood chunks that come off I don't want them going down inside the passages So when I come running in with the, the cold sleeve, I'll make sure that the chamfer, the chamfer is on the bottom so when I place this down inside, it self aligns somewhat. I then grab the 4x4 
I place it over top of the sleeve and I and I make sure I don't I don't go this way because I'll hit this bolt and then I'll come in and I'll just start tapping it down all the way down so what we may see as a result of that because I won't be doing very much talking when I do that work is you'll get a, an indentation of the sleeve on on this surface this bearing surface of the wood and that's okay as as I go along, what I'll do is I, I, may, I may just cut this 4x4 four four back a quarter of an inch or a half an inch and then repeat the process over and over until we have it, we have it close to the top of the, of the, the block. See the, the wood fibers? All right, so I'll go cut this back on the saw. apply a rag so that more energy is transferred to the sleeve from the wood without it indenting the wood. See that? That's what I mean. We'll continue. Okay. So at this stage. The sleeve isn't completely flush yet with the, the head and I basically have reached the end of what I can with the wood. So what I'll use next is a nice flat piece of metal. This is, this is a, a chunk of metal that that we used from the the LS tractor rebuild. This was part of the 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 engine tie down to the pallet. So I'm going to use this. Okay, lay this on top like this, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a couple of good whacks to try to push push the remaining sleeve into the bore. We're almost there. You can 
see the, the holes from the, from the sleeves there. Right. I have to make sure that we're contacting all the way around the sleeve and not just partial. Okay, so I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna be tapping right down here like this, and we'll do this. Give it a good pop. Again, let's go direct contact. Okay, so there you have it. We successfully inserted the sleeve. It's, it's flush with the top of the, the cylinder block. So what I'm gonna do now is use some compressed air and just spray, spray the junk away. And then remove the tape okay so there you have it the two the two brand new sleeves are are installed in the engine bore the next step will be is to install the 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 rings onto each of the individual pistons mount the pistons onto the connecting rods and then install the pistons with the connecting rods into each individual cylinder that will come in the next video so stay tuned to the next video as we continue the engine rebuild and until then, take care and see you next time.